Hello and welcome to Grief Seeds, a podcast where you'll find insights, reframings, metaphors, and visualizations, all known as Grief Seeds, to help you cultivate growth and healing in your life after loss. My name is Shelby Forsythia. I'm an intuitive grief guide and author, and on this show, I'll share insights from my interactions with clients, wise words from fellow grievers, and personal stories from my own life with the hope that they transform your grief as they have transformed mine. Because even when it doesn't feel like it, we are planting the seeds of growth in the midst of great pain and heartache. Your grief is welcome here. Hi there, grief growers, and welcome to another episode of Grief Seeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today, what I'd like to offer you is an undeniable truth and one that so many grievers come to at some point within their grief journeys. Some see it and experience it immediately and others feel it creeping in over time or arriving on a big milestone and they realize this is going to be like this for the entire rest of my life. And what I'm talking about is something that I like to refer to as the 1% rule of grief. And what this essentially means is whenever anything in your life has happened in the past, it probably feels like, or most grievers report it feeling like, I was able to feel one emotion at the time. I only felt joy. I only felt happiness. I only felt elation. I only felt pride. And in life after loss, what happens often for many, many grievers, especially those that I speak to on a one-on-one basis where we're able to get into depths of conversation, is this reality that no matter what I feel, joy, happiness, elation, pride, now in life after loss, something else comes along with it. That something else is grief. Whether it's sadness, whether it's nostalgia, whether it's anger or fear or pain, it's as if something else comes up alongside these happy emotions and prevents you from feeling 100% of the thing ever again in life after loss. And it comes up whether you are facing loss due to death, loss due to divorce, a diagnosis that has changed your life, a major move, financial hardship, even COVID-19. These things, these emotions, these griefs, it's almost as if they stick to these more positive emotions. And everywhere we go, no matter the level of joy or happiness or elation or pride that we feel, grief also comes along for the ride. And this is not bad. This is not wrong. This is not because we are unable to push grief to the margins enough so that we can feel 100% joy again. This is simply the nature of grief. But it's one of the most devastating parts of loss that no matter where you go, no matter what you accomplish, no matter what wedding or graduation or retirement party you attend, grief is now always coming along for the ride. You can never feel 100% of an emotion again because at least 1% of that will always be reserved for grief. Now this might sound despairing or hopeless or tragic and maybe for you it is and that's okay if that's where you are with it right now. But one of my favorite authors, Glennon Doyle, talks about something called the ache that she has lived with her entire life, this, this knowing that things are going to end, this knowing that things are important and it's hard to get attached to them because one day they won't exist anymore. And there are so many things we do as humans to numb out this thing she calls the ache. We drink, we overeat, we stay up too late, we escape through fantasy like Netflix binges or reading back to back to back to back to back books in order to try to get away from the reality that one day this will end, that one day this will no longer exist. 
And what she writes in her book, Untamed, is that her first response to the ache was to run away, to try to escape it, to try and numb it out or to block it with addiction or with distraction. And what she's learning through time and through experience is that the ache is not here to torture us. Grief is not here to lord over us and say, I am tormenting you with pain, with agony, with rage, with nostalgia for the rest of your life. What the role of the ache is, and what I believe the role of this 1% of grief is, is to remind you that this is important. It's not, this is important, so escape. It's, this is important, so stay. Experience it. Really soak in all of the emotions, all the feelings, all of the joy, happiness, pride, sadness, nostalgia, elation, anger, rage, numbness of this moment because someday it won't be here anymore. And grief can be this beautiful and painful and constant, constant, constant reminder that this will end. So be present with it and for it. And it can be frustrating, I hear you, when you show up to a big milestone in life after loss and you're not able to just flip a switch and just feel happiness again. It's annoying that grief always comes along for the ride. And a way that you can allow that to be so is remembering this 1% rule of grief. I can feel 99% of the joy that I used to. 1% of it is grief. I can feel 80% of the happiness that I remember being able to feel. And now 20% is grief. I'm split down the middle. I can feel 50% of the pride in myself that I used to feel. And now 50% of it is the grief of missing my mother. And these numbers will always change. They will be in flux. They will not be static across time. Lord knows grief never confines itself to one, (laughs) to one way of being. And when you go into situations, to milestones, to birthdays, to anniversaries, to graduations, to parties, to these huge moments in your life where they should have been there, it should have looked different. Your expectations for the future don't match what's actually happening right now. You can metaphorically offer grief a seat at the table. I know you're coming to the party. May as well set a place for you. So that when the dialogue around the table kicks in with happiness, with joy, with pride, whether you allow it to speak up or not during the toasts, you can allow grief to be present in this moment with you. You can share this moment with an emotion, with a feeling, with an experience that already is sharing this experience with you. And again, it's not because there's something wrong with you. You are not incorrect or incapable for not being able to set grief aside in favor of feeling a hundred percent of a happy emotion again. You're actually really normal for thinking, I wish they were here. I wish they could see this. This wasn't how this was supposed to look. This wasn't how this was supposed to go. This wasn't what I was supposed to be wearing. These are not the circumstances that I wanted this to occur under. You can have those thoughts, those 1%, 12%, 15%, 38%, 75% of grief. Along with the happiness, the joy, the elation, the pride of feeling these memorable moments. You can allow all of that to simply be true. 
and know that nothing more is required of you just to acknowledge the grief in the room just to nod your head at the one percent of grief that's showing itself to be true and keep your eyes open your heart open your body open your mind open your spirit open to acknowledging and receiving the 1% of grief as it continues to accompany you through your milestones, through your big days, and through the times when you used to feel 100% of joy. I invite you to take a deep breath in with me here. And out. As you traverse the entire rest of your life, grief grower. As you climb ladders, as you accomplish things, as you have remarkable days with remarkable people, as you experience soaring love and wonder and magic. May you give grief a seat at the table to come along for the ride. May it gradually become okay with you that 1% of grief, that 15% of grief, that 47% of grief, that 62% grief, that 84% grief stick to and come up alongside these emotions that used to feel pure and unadulterated by pain. May you know that grief exists because their loss was important, because your loss was important, and because your heart knows now more than ever the temporary state of life. This ache exists, this 1% of grief exists because you experienced a loss and because this moment, even this one you're living in right now, will end. You know intimately the loss folded into everything there is. And it's okay to set a place for it. It's okay to allow it to come along for the ride. This 1% of grief Making itself known does not mean there's something wrong with you or that you need to be fixed so that you can return to a homeostasis of every happy memory being just happy again. Rather, your mission now, should you choose to accept it, is to honor and make room within yourself for the grief that inevitably is going to show up to the party. It may not bring gifts. It may not offer you a toast. The thing it may have to give you might be pain or heartache or nostalgia or tears. And simultaneously, this 1% of grief is a reminder of the preciousness of everything that you are going through. Grief does not arrive to torture you. It arrives to remind you that you care. And that it's okay to care. Because while whatever you're going through, whatever you're accomplishing, whatever you're becoming, whatever is at the root of this happiness and this milestone matters, that loss matters too. And it is more than acceptable to notice both, to acknowledge both and to honor both I am sending you so much love as you acknowledge the one percent of grief that will always be present from here on out and know that as you are feeling it that everyone who has ever grieved knows this one percent of grief too as you walk across that stage as you say I do As you cross into retirement 
as you welcome a new member of your family. Everyone across the world who has ever lost that is doing the same is also acknowledging the grief in the room. Deep breath in here. And out. Thank you so much for joining me today on Grief Seeds. So that's all for this episode of Grief Seeds. Thank you so much for listening today. You can find additional grief support at shelbyforsythia.com or by following me on social media at Shelby for Scythia on Facebook and Instagram. If this podcast helped you in your life after loss, please leave a review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And be sure to share Grief Seeds with a friend, because you never know what someone you love is going through. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for financially keeping this podcast on the air. If you'd like to support Grief Seeds on Patreon through a yearly or monthly pledge, you can do so at patreon.com slash My Patreon supporters get access to behind-the-scenes content, including a once-a-month grief support call with me and five 90-minute workshops with topics decided by grievers themselves. Again, that website is patreon.com slash shelbyforsythia. Music for Grief Seeds is performed by Addie Goldstein. As always, my dear grief growers, it was beautiful sharing this space and time with you today. I see you. I am so proud of you and the work that you're doing in the world. And I love you. Because even through grief, we are growing.